we want to talk about being partakers of the sacrifice that that Jesus made, and we're we're going to uh, be talking about uh, the royal priesthood. And Brother Fred um, and I have been before the Lord, and we believe that that He is imparting into all of us tonight that he is giving to us uh, what we need, what we need to hear, what we need to be walking in. And, uh, and this is the, it's a time uh, of walking, not a time of crawling, not a time of just sitting down, but it's a time of walking uh, in the Lord. And so I'm going to turn it over to, to Brother Fred. Uh, again, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. I love it here. We're continuing in the series, Identity to Destiny. It's important for us to know our identity in Christ Jesus. And tonight we're going to be talking about the royal priesthood. Uh, the Lord spoke uh, two main things to us as we were uh, seeking, about this, seeking him about this message. And the first was to be a partaker of the sacrifice. And the second is to be a royal priest. And, and so let's start with uh, uh, 2 Peter 1, 9 that says, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, 1 Peter 2, 9 that says, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Now that's not in the sweet by and by, that's you are. You are a chosen generation, so you've been chosen. You've been chosen as a royal priest and as a holy nation, uh, a peculiar people. Now, uh, yeah. You may think we're peculiar, but right there it is. Uh, there, uh, Jesus uh, and per, First Peter uh, talks about it that we are peculiar. Uh, peculiar people for a possession to the Lord and to offer up praises, and uh, that's exciting. And so that's where we're going to start. Then you're already a royal priest, and let's see what that means. Well, first of all, we need to see where the precedent is for a royal priest, and, and to find out where a royal priest is first mentioned in the Bible, it's um, Genesis chapter 14, verses 18 through 20. It's just a short passage, uh, three verses, and it's uh, Melchizedek, mm -hmm. Melchizedek. And uh, he come, Abraham, Abram, Abram at this time, uh, before his name was changed to Abraham, but his name is Abram, and he had been off in a battle, uh, and he had uh, conquered uh, mm -hmm. some some enemies and, and gathered uh, some spoils and also uh, retrieved the people that had been held captive. And so here comes this priest, but he's a king and a priest. This is the first time the Bible uses the word priest. So that means it's very significant, and it's not just a priest, but he's a king and a priest, and he's the priest of Salem, and of course, we know that Salem means uh, peace, but it's a geographical area, and so he's a king over uh, a place in the earth, and so he's a king over the earth. He's a king and a priest over the earth, over a portion of the earth, so he has influence and impact. He's a royal uh, priest, and so it's not just a king, and nor is he just a priest, but he's a king and a priest. Now, we're going to see later on that there is another line of priests that uh, God institutes, and these are uh, the Levitical priests. Now, the thing about the Levitical priests is that they have nothing to offer until somebody gives them something, puts it in their hand. But that's not the true, true for a royal priest. A royal priest has something to offer from the beginning. Uh, he had bread and wine. And Abram had been out fighting a battle. And so he meets him and he gives him uh, bread and wine. Uh, now also, uh, and, and this goes back to 1 Peter 2, 9, that says, uh, give praises. And so what he did, uh, what this royal priest did he blessed abram uh, of the of the god most high he blessed abram of the god most high and and he blessed him for giving him victory he, he blessed god and he blessed abram uh and and so that's what we do 
Mm. And we're going to see that over and over again. This, this is about praises and this is about blessing and blessing God. And a royal priest, uh, see, is different than what you have a mind about a Levitical priest. A Levitical priest has nothing until you give him something uh, to offer up. But you're not a Levitical priest, nor was Jesus a Levitical priest. Amen. Amen. Uh, but uh, God said to him in uh, Psalm 110, verse 4, that you are a priest forever Ooh, uh, according to the, the order, order of Melchizedek. Yeah. And, and so here he is. He, he's always been a priest. He's a priest. And God said he's a priest and not only a priest, but also we'll see that he was a high priest. So let's look in Hebrews for a moment. Uh, and Hebrews, and we're just going to briefly go through some high points in Hebrews. See, Hebrews is the uh, like Levitical, like Leviticus in the Old Testament talks about priests. This Hebrews talks about priests in the New Testament. So this is the priestly book of the New Testament. Now in Hebrews 3, 1, it says that Jesus is apostle and high priest. Um, mm. That doesn't mean in the sweet by and by. So what does it mean to be apostle and high priest? Well, he was sent. Apostle means sent comes one. From the, word, the sent one. So he was sent to the earth to bring redemption. And then he was chosen and called back to heaven as a high priest. Oh, so he's yeah, sent yeah. from heaven to bring redemption and chosen and called uh, by his heavenly father to be high priest forever. That's what the uh, mm. uh, three one talks about. Now, uh, Hebrews 5, 1 talks that, says that the high priests are going to have gifts and offerings to sacrifice. So he was a high, is a high priest, and uh, he was a high priest on, he was a priest on the earth. And uh, so it says that priests are going to have uh, gifts and offerings. And, and so let me just uh, mention this about kings versus priests. Uh, kings reign. Uh, and uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 8 says that where the word of a king is, there is authority and power. power. So not only do they say something and that has, carries authority, but they have an army behind them. A king has an army behind him, and it, that's power. He's got power to bring it to He has place. warriors! So nobody's going to question him. Well, what do you mean? Uh, when, you, uh, the, when the king gets up and says something, that's the way it's going to be. So the king uh, makes the, uh, these proclamations, and his word it has authority. And so he reigns. The king reigns. The priest offers sacrifices. Ooh, glory. The priest offers sacrifices and partakes of the sacrifices. Uh, Leviticus chapter 6 talks about the grain offerings, and, and so the priests uh, eat of the grain offering. Some of it's offered to the Lord, and some of it's eaten by the priest, and then there's the sin offering also in uh, Leviticus 6, and uh, again, the person who offers it, uh, they get to eat of it, and then the, all of the priests get to eat from the sin offerings, and so that's the partaker, so you have a partaker of the sin offering. Now, that this may seem rather abstract to begin with, but, but we're going to get down to very, very practical. And so I need to lay some foundation. And I want you to see that Jesus is priest and he was priest on the earth mm -hmm. because in uh, Hebrews 5, 7, going back to Hebrews, it says uh, when he was in this life, uh, and on the earth that he offered, uh, he offered something. Why? Because he's a priest. And what did he offer uh, there in Hebrews 5, 7? It says he offered prayers and supplications, mm -hmm. prayers and supplications. And then in uh, Hebrews 9, 14, it says he offered himself. Ooh, hallelujah. And so what we see here is that he offered himself and he offered some other sacrifices that were uh, an expression of the fact that he had offered himself. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so th this is real important that not only, and this applies to us, he set the pattern. Jesus sets the pattern. He's the priest. And now we see in 
uh, Hebrews uh, chapter 13, uh, verses 15 and 16, that by him, by Jesus, we are priests and we offer sacrifices. Hallelujah. Okay, but we offer two kinds of sacrifices, just like Jesus offered two kinds of sacrifices. He offered himself and he offered outward expressions of his inward offering of himself. It's the same for us. We offer two kinds of offerings. We are priests, uh, not mm -hmm. only priests, but also kings and priests. Uh, the, the, the chapter in Peter uh, says that we are royal priests. That mm -hmm. means kings and priests. Um, Romans uh, 5 verse 17 says we reign in this life and so by, by Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus, and so we are reigning. Okay, so I, I'm I'm wanting this lay this foundation, so that there are two ways for us to be a priest. Uh, the two things that we have to do, two types of sacrifices, and the first is to offer ourselves, offer ourselves, and then we offer some external expressions of our. Uh, inward offering of ourself and so mm. and hebrews chapter um, 13 verse 15 and 16 says these are the things we offer we offer praises mm -hmm. we offer thanksgiving we offer good deeds and we offer sharing and all of those he said with these sacrifices god is well pleased so we offer ourselves, and I'm going to show you in the scripture how we do that. And then we offer these as an outward expression that we have offered ourselves. Okay. So remember this. We offer praises, thanksgiving, good deeds, and sharing with others. Okay. But now Romans 12, and, and this is kind of the the, the uh, conclusion of, of this part of the message just kind of laying out what the royal priest does and, and that is in Romans 12 and, and we need to know what what uh, have proceeded uh, preceded uh, Romans 12 and that is 1 through 11 it talks about the man's need and God's provision and because God provided what man needed. Now in, in uh, chapter 12, Paul writes, therefore, I beg you. Okay, so this is real important. This is building on everything he said in chapters 1 through 11. He said, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. sacrifice. You are the priest. You present your body as a living sacrifice. And you, by that, you your mind will be transformed and mm -hmm. you will know the perfect, well, the good, acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, this is why this is important. This is real important that we need to put our bodies on the altar or we need to open up our heart and say, Lord, I'm giving you everything. Uh, and when we say bodies, well, you're your body's the vessel for your spirit and your soul. And so it's everything. So that's you. So put your body on the altar of God and say, I'm committing uh, myself to you, Lord. I, I'm just, I, I'm yielding myself as a living sacrifice. Then I will not be conformed to the world, but I will be transformed. So my mind will be renewed. Then I can renew my mind and I'll know the will of God and I'll know the plan of God. Now, some of you may say, well, God doesn't talk to me and God's not revealing his plan. And so I'm just going out there and doing the best I can. Uh, uh, but let me tell you, the reason he's not talking to you, the reason that he's uh, not showing you his plan is that you haven't laid your body on the altar. You haven't sacrificed because he cannot reveal his plan to a carnal mind. A carnal mind, mm -hmm. Romans 8, says that it, it's an enemy. It's a hostile. It's hostile to God. And so in order for God to speak to you and reveal himself to you and transform your mind, you've got to lay it all down. 
and uh, on the altar of God. You got to present yourself a living sacrifice. Then you are in store for your mind to be renewed and God to begin to show you his will for you, his plan for you. He will not reveal his plans to his enemies. And the carnal mind is an enemy to God. And the only way we can get our mind renewed is by putting our bodies on the altar of God and say, I'm yours. You know, Jesus said, uh, if you uh, want to, anybody that tries to hold on to their life, they're going to lose it. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and so if you want, want life, you have to lay your life down oh, uh, and sacrifice. Lay your uh, body on the altar of God. And, and I'm going to just pause for a minute here and give you that opportunity. Um, perhaps uh, some of you have not done that. And, and you may be wondering why God hasn't uh, revealed his uh, uh, secrets to you and he hasn't revealed his plans to you. Maybe you need to uh, even renew your commitment to put your body on the altar mm -hmm. so your mind can be renewed so he can show yes. you his will. Yes. And, and so I, I'm just going to ask Sherry to lead us in, in a, a prayer here. If you want to participate, uh, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine. But we'll just all do it together and we'll let Sherry lead us. We're going to, we want to put our bodies on the altar of God as a living sacrifice mm -hmm. because we are priests. He's called us to be a priest. Okay, mm -hmm. Sherry. Well, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we come before you with, with humble hearts and we present our bodies, a living sacrifice unto you right now. Our vessels we present unto you uh, so that we might uh, be transformed and that our minds might be renewed and we receive from you a uh, revelation of your word we receive power from you we receive uh, every provision uh, made for us in the name of Jesus uh, because we are presenting ourselves to you right now in the name of Jesus and we thank you for receiving us we thank you uh, that you have uh, done everything for us on the cross. You said it's finished. And Lord, right now we cry out, uh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And upon that name, we shall receive uh, all that we need, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So I, I want to say again that it's important for us to recognize that we are royal priests, a royal priest. And, and the thing about a royal priest is not something you choose. See, God is the one who chooses. Says you are a chosen, chosen generation. generation. You're chosen. So uh, it's not by your choice. It's by his choice. He chose you and he chose you to be a royal priest. You know, it's like uh, Aaron mm. uh, in the Old Testament. Uh, you know, all of the leaders, all of the leaders said, well, I, I can be high priest. Uh, um, so why, why is Aaron high priest? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and so God said, we'll get all of their staffs and put them in the, in the temple and we'll see in the morning, uh, really what he was saying is we're going to see who I have chosen. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the next morning, Aaron's staff, I mean, it's just a dead stick. Aaron's <laughs> staff uh, had but it, it had blossomed. It had brought forth mature almonds. And so they went in and looked at it and said, well, it's Aaron. Obviously, Aaron, Aaron is the one is chosen. The one. So everybody wanted to be uh, a priest, but Aaron was the high priest that God had chosen. See, it's God uh, that chooses. Uh, Jesus told his disciples, mm -hmm. you haven't chosen me. I've chosen, chosen you. you. Well, it's the same for you. But in this case, you have been chosen. Hallelujah! I, I want you to be encouraged because you have been chosen to be a priest. Now, okay, so what does that mean? Well, you can partake of the sacrifice. Amen, uh, amen. Just like Leviticus uh, chapter 6 said, that the priests can partake of the sacrifice. And, and so what does that mean? You can partake of the sacrifice. Well, Jesus said in 
John chapter 6, uh, beginning in verse 51, he said, I am the bread of life. Uh, yes, and amen, so, amen. And he goes through that passage and he says, uh, if you eat, eat my, my flesh, flesh and drink, drink my, my blood, blood, then you're going to remain in me and I will remain in you. Ooh, hallelujah. And then we think about what uh, John 15, 7 says, that uh, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will. And so if you're a priest, then you be eating his flesh and drinking his blood and you will be abiding in the vine you'll be abiding in jesus and he will be abiding in you and your prayers will be answered do you have prayers that haven't been answered well maybe you haven't been abiding in the vine because you are, have been ordained to bring forth, forth much fruit. much fruit but this fruit that it's talking about there in john 15 is the prayer, the answered prayers. You have been ordained to bring forth many prayers. Uh, Ooh, hallelujah. Prayers that are profitable. Mm, uh, mm, there's a lot of people mm, out there that are praying prayers, but they're ineffective. They spend a lot of time in praying, uh, and but they get their joy out of the fact that, well, I, I prayed for an hour today and yesterday I prayed. Well, okay. So they get their joy out of a form of godliness, but they deny the power. Ooh, oh and my their goodness. Prayers, their prayers are not getting oh, wow. answered. That's, wow. that's religion. Uh, they're, 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 oh, they look very godly, but they're denying the power and they're not getting their prayers answered. But, you know, John 16, Jesus said, hmm. if you ask anything in my, my name, name, the Father will give it to you that your joy might be full. full. So where do you get joy then in praying? Yes. It's by answered prayer. Amen. By answered prayer. And so as a priest, your prayers can be answered uh, as you eat his flesh and drink his blood. You abide in him and your prayers are answered. It's a very simple formula, a framework and principle whatever you want to call it, there it is. You just eat his flesh, drink his blood, you abide in him, he abides in you, and your prayers are answered. Ask what you will, and it shall be done. Hallelujah. You know, I like what 1 Corinthians uh, 10, 16 says, uh, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not to share in the blood? Oh, I mean, our partaking of the blood, and the uh flesh or the as we eat the bread we partake of the flesh of jesus of his body we partake of his body so this is real important so they're really the two things and going back to the two things the lord said about this message was that we're royal priests and we partake of the sacrifice and what is the sacrifice it's the sacrifice of jesus christ amen amen jesus christ and his flesh and his blood and by doing that, we abide in him and he abides in us and our prayers are answered. And that's pretty exciting. Yes, it is. Uh, you, you know, I wished uh, years ago people had told me how to get my prayers answered because I prayed mm -hmm. a lot of prayers that uh, didn't get answered. But here it is. Just eat his flesh and drink his blood and that will cause you to abide in him and he will abide in you. And you ask the father anything, in the name of Jesus, and your prayers will be answered, that your joy mm -hmm. will be full. full. I mean, so that, I mean. that is really exciting. And that's that's the way prayers are supposed to be to, to operate, that you're so close to Jesus. You're abiding in him, and he's abiding in you, that uh, your prayers get answered. You just ask what you will. Mm -hmm. He didn't put limitations on you in, in, in your prayers. He didn't say, well, 50% uh, of your prayers will be answered. He didn't say, well, only prayers that relate to finances or only prayers that don't relate to finances. Mm -hmm. He didn't put any kind of limitations on you. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done. Hallelujah. You. Because you've been ordained. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. You're a royal priest, a, a chosen, a, a chosen. You're chosen of God to be a royal priest. That means you're somebody. You've got something to do. And what is it that you mm -hmm. do? Well, from Hebrews uh, chapter 13, verses 15 and 16, we're to offer up praises. Mm -hmm. 
And we see that we see that yeah. in the in, uh, in the first example there in Genesis when when the high priest, the royal priest, blessed Abram, he blessed God, and he um, blessed Abram uh, of the Most High God, and he the possessor of heaven and earth, and he blessed God. And, and so that's what we do. You just see it over and over again mm. that priests, I'm talking about royal priests, people who are in charge, I mean, who, who God has given authority to, to proclaim a matter and it shall come to pass. Uh, that's the people mm -hmm. who can make a proclamation and things are going to change because they are royal priests. Hallelujah. And where the word of a king is, yes, there things is. are going to happen yeah. because they're speaking things in with authority. And then that reminds me of Revelation chapter 12, 11, which is one of my uh, favorite mm -hmm. verses. We overcome him and overcome the old dragon. We overcome the enemy. Uh, by what? By the blood but. of the lamb. Hallelujah. Who can participate in the blood of the lamb? Priests. Royal priests Hallelujah. participate in the blood. They can apply the blood. So that's what we're talking about here. What does it mean to be a royal priest? You can apply the blood. And so you overcome. You can apply the blood to anything. You can apply it to your house. Uh, go to the mm -hmm. go to your door. Mm -hmm. Go to your windows. Apply the blood. Yes, apply the to blood. your family. To your family. If there's somebody sick in your family or in your neighborhood or a friend, apply in, the in blood. In the workplace. What, whatever it is, apply the blood. Well, that's just the first thing. But but a, a priest can do that because they can participate in the sacrifice. Oh, and the second thing, we overcome by the word of our testimony. Amen, amen. This is, I believe it's an exciting message. And, and I want you to be encouraged tonight that you have been chosen. Not somebody over there, but you have been chosen. Now, I, I want you to know that you take, can take communion in your home anytime you want to. And a lot of you might say, well, I, I have to wait. I have to wait until I'm in a church service and the pastor says I can take communion. Let me tell you mm -hmm. that that's religion. Religion tries to put a wedge between you and God. Here's God, here's you. And they want to put a wedge in there and they try to fill the wedge. That's what religion is. But you are a high priest. I'm not a high priest, a royal priest. See, if you realize you are a royal priest, you can take communion. Anytime. Because you can participate. Listen to me. You can participate in the sacrifice that Jesus made for you. You can uh, eat his flesh and drink his blood. And you don't have to wait till the first Sunday uh, of each month or whenever your congregation does it. And you can certainly let a pastor administer the communion, but I want you to know that God has chosen you. You're a chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood. priesthood. You a royal priest. And that means you're king and priest. You reign in life by Christ Jesus, and you can partake of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. You can partake of it anytime you need it. Uh, you, you may need to apply the blood to your house. You may want to apply the, the blood to your automobile. Mm. You may want to apply uh, the blood uh, in your workplace. Uh, if, if, you're, if you're experiencing chaos in the workplace, well, stay late or come early and apply the blood. Hallelujah. Apply the blood to, to the office. You, you know, I was a, a professor at a university and and I would stay late and go in early because I, I would anoint all of the desks, all of the chairs, uh, the walls, the doors, uh, windows, anybody coming in there was going to feel the anointing upon them. Uh, and I didn't have to wait until somebody said, this is okay, you can do it. No, because we have been called. You have been called as a royal priest. That's a person with authority. See, you, you look at Melchizedek, uh, he had authority in the natural realm. 
<laughs> he had authority in the spiritual realm because he was a king of righteousness. Righteousness oh, is spiritual. Hallelujah. So he had authority in the spiritual realm. He had authority in the natural realm. Oh, praise and that God. Was the praise God. That was Hallelujah. the model the royal priesthood mm -hmm. was based on. Mm -hmm. And even Jesus, uh, when he came along, the father said to him, you are a priest forever after oh, this order. Hallelujah. After this order of a royal priest. And that's oh, who you Jesus. are. Hallelujah. I want you to, to recognize you are a person of value. Amen. You, you are a Amen. person of influence. You can partake of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. You can get your prayers answered. You can uh, uh, influence uh, the the earth have influence on the earth. You can have influence in the spiritual realm. Mm. You are a person of value and, and a person with influence. And I want you to be encouraged and strengthened that, that you can partake of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and, and you can overcome the enemy in any situation. You don't have to wait uh, and call on somebody else. You have yeah. the authority. Amen. You, Amen. You are a king. You reign in life by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And you are a priest forever. Amen. Now, don't think, oh, it's going to end when we leave here. No. 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 You are a priest forever. You'll be singing praises to yes. God. Yes. Hallelujah. You'll be singing praises to God. You'll be giving him thanksgiving. Uh, you'll be blessing him because he's worthy of all praise. He's worthy of all honor. And uh, you, whatever you do good on this earth, glory to God, that's a sacrifice. That's a sacrifice and God is well pleased with it. Whatever you share with other people, whether it be your time, whether it be your finances, whether, whether it be a, a shirt on your back, whatever it is, he sees that. God sees that Amen. as a sacrifice and he's well pleased with hallelujah, hallelujah hallelujah you know that's what i just wanted to to quickly add here and then we'll open up the the floor for your comments uh but we are partakers of each other we are partakers what what god has given anna monica you know i can partake of that what god has given Haley, i can partake of that what God gave Enoch, we partook of that. We uh, we were partakers of, of his worship. We were partakers of his, uh, you know, when we met with him, uh, there was, there. all we talked about was the Lord. All we spoke about was the Lord. And, and there was encouragement there and there was joy there. And, and just uh, be, you know, be partakers of each other. And, and I know that we we've spent time with uh, Brother Wayne and Sister Bernice, and we have uh, we have been partakers of them. We've been partakers of, of Cindy. We've been partakers of Bobby Joe. Uh, you know, this is something that is extremely important. We've been partakers of Lenny and Jackie, and and their their love for people and their uh, love for the Lord, and and we we've we've sat there and we we've, we've been partakers of Jamie and Candace and and this is in and Judy hallelujah and Ruth and and and, and Lisa and Corey uh, we have been partakers uh, of you and and so I just encourage you uh, to uh, to have something available for people to to partake of you know you know, have that presence with you. Have the love of God in your heart that you can just uh, spill out to other people. Have that 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 warrior in you uh, just uh, pour out on other people in the name of Jesus. Uh, that diligence in Jesus' name, and and that that organization. You know. Uh, I'm looking at some administrators here. Cindy is an administrator. Sharice is an administrator. Judy is an administrator. Uh, and I see that. And I want to partake of those, those gifts uh, that, that you have. And, uh, and we, we love to take communion. We take communion every single day uh, because we want to, it says every time you commune, uh, I have take communion, 
you partake of his body, you partake of his blood, you remember what he did. I never want to forget what Jesus did for me. On the cross, on Calvary, and every time I put that, that little cracker in my mouth, and every time I put the, the little juice in my mouth, I'm saying, Lord, I remember you. I remember how you bled on Calvary. I remember uh, that you put the thorn, uh, uh, the crown of thorns upon your, uh, your head so that I don't have to go into depression anymore. I don't have to have anxiety anymore. I don't have to try to commit suicide anymore because I remember what Jesus did for me.